a friend. What a friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. Doctor, please, can you pray for us? Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you. Blessed be your holy name. Father, we appreciate you because you are our friend. We thank you because you are our father. We thank you because you are our hiding place. Blessed be your holy name. Father, I thank you. We give you glory. As well as today, Father, I thank you because I was talking to you about Jehovah Petru and you showed up. Blessed be your holy name. You are our friend. You are our hiding place. We thank you, Jesus. You never leave us nor forsake us. Father, we are here once again to learn at your feet, to understand your ways, to understand your word, to be able to walk according to your will. Holy Spirit, Lord, we ask today, Jehovah Lord, help us. Give us the grace to be able to understand your word, to be able to understand your ways. Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you once again concerning all your children, those who are here and those who are coming. Father, we appreciate you. We continue to thank you. Open our eyes to, to see you. Open our mind to understand. Open our hearts to understand. For in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank God. In my personal opinion, there are three major things that are particularly traumatic. One, when a loved one dies. Two, when a loved one is terribly sick or terminally sick. And three, when we are attacked by armed robbers. Very, very traumatic. I got a report from Mrs. Adeyinka Adebayo this afternoon that their family was attacked by robbers at night. She was actually in Ibadan. But uh, they came in and robbed all the six flats in their building. She sent me a picture, I can actually show you here picture, I don't even know how they did it. The, the door fell down. I said, how did they manage to bring the door down? When I spoke to Mr. Dinka, he says that he feels they put some chemicals around the door and it weakened the, the I don't know, I don't understand that principle. But the door just fell down. And then they came back the next day. So they, they have really not been able to go back to that house. So they took all their cell phones, they took all their electronics. I want us to start tonight by just praying for them. Asking the Redeemer to redeem. Asking the Comforter to comfort, asking God to uphold them in their faith in him. And this incident, they will not be shaken by it, but that to the shame of the, to the, of the evil one, it will take them to another level in God. One day, please, can you take that prayer for us? In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your grace. Most of all, we thank you for life. We thank you because in your word, to destroy. We know that when we are touched by this kind of circumstance, it is traumatic. It is very traumatic and it can destabilize, can be devastating. Father Lord, we ask for redemption. 
who alone, who built these things for them, who acquired these things for them, who give them these gifts of these valuables. Oh Lord, you come and redeem for them and restore to them in Jesus' name. Amen. Because happiness comes when people have their belongings intact. There's happiness in the fact that you have not lost something. Because it's not just the valuable thing that you lose, but also the 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 things the emotions or social ties to it oh lord come and restore them sevenfold in jesus name father we pray for this family especially their spiritual well-being is in your hands from the head of the family to his partner his wife and his children oh lord they shall not see this kind of evil event again in jesus name amen any kind of trauma that is affecting the children, or affecting the parents at this point in time, oh Lord, you come and take away in Jesus' name. Come Amen. and be their comforter. Come and be their restoration. Amen. Come and be their father once Amen. again. And we pray for the old family of healing wings and everybody we know that we shall not see this kind of circumstance again in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray that we shall not experience this kind of trauma again. And most of all, oh Lord, your spirit is the one we need. And that is why we have attained Bible study and practical Christianity. Oh Lord, we pray that anything that will devastate or anything that will shake us from your spirit, oh Lord, you will not let it happen in Jesus' name. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. God knows what he's doing. How he does it and when he does it. I was just telling us on Sunday that we should raise uh, some funds for Mama Samuel. Very few people have yet to respond. I believe in God that people will respond because Healing Wings must be a given church. We cannot not pay tithes. And now we are not a paying offering, but we cannot respond to people in need. And then suddenly, this Mr. Dinka has also came up. We have to rally around and help because he can't, he can't continue staying in that place. He has to look for another place to live in. So again, we have to help him to find another place. The challenge is ours because the affliction of one is the affliction of all in healing wings. The Lord himself is our provision. This evening, uh, I want us to look again at the issue of prayer. I've titled it, The Meaning of Prayer. Yemi Si Arabi What is prayer? Good evening. Good evening. Prayer is, prayer is talking to God. And, um, incorporating him inviting him into what is happening. Um, but, but more than that, prayer is, is life, because if you don't pray, you're, you're done, you're, you're done for. And it's, um, it's almost as, it's like eating and sleeping. So. But what about some of us that did not pray for 40 years? Sometimes I believe that prayer is happening um, in all kinds of ways. For example, you know, I know that when people are praying in tongues, they actually 
praying for people they don't know, they're praying, they're filling in the gaps of, of prayer uh, for other people. I mean, people, have, people across the world, people that you have no idea what's happening with them. So I think that God has a way of doing that. And then we usually, uh, I mean, I've prayed for my children. I've been praying for them for years. So that in itself feels like a water tank of sorts. So if they're not, I mean, I, mean, I know your mom was praying. So that covers us up. So we have to now take up the mantle. Your mom or your grandmother? <laughs> Yes, you <laughs> my grandmother. <laughs> yes, so. What does prayer mean to you, MC? <laughs> prayer is like, uh, I, I have a, for a long time I didn't know because I had a dream where I was standing in front of two very big glass doors. They were like heavy, um, they're not sliding glass doors. They were more like just doors you opened, but they were open. And I was in a hallway and the hallway was lit, but there were three watches on the ground. I didn't recognize two of the watches, but one of the, the third one was my own watch. It was, it was I have a red watch. So, for a long time, I didn't understand the dream until I'm, I now realized that I, I was given the third watch and the third watch is a prayer watch. It is, well, the first watch is a prayer watch, the second watch is a prayer watch, the third, the third watch is 12 to three. So, but I believe that God gives people um, different, and this is something that you have to do every day. It's not something you can go on holiday from. So it is a calling. It is, and it is also a necessity because if you're not watching and something happens, then you're responsible because it's like you're a gate man and you slept. So a prayer is just, it's just indispensable. There's, I, I can't imagine how people are not praying. Um, because even with prayer, you just, there's still so much happening. So. You, 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 are, you, are, you are saying a lot, but not saying it fulsomely to us. We are ignorant people and you have been given a revelation. I mean, Jesus says, watch and pray. What is the watch? Because now you say that you, 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 you had of this hall and there are three watches. What does it mean by watching and praying? Uh, I believe that you are giving, everybody's giving the time to pray. Because it's like we're, we're an army and with armies you have people who are watching all the time there. And there's usually, um, how do you say it? A shift. So that, that watch person is usually sitting up on a tower somewhere and he's just looking out. So what happens is for me, my own, I pray and then I sleep and then it is, that's when my own sight opens. Everybody has a different way in which it, it works for them. So, but, but if, I, if I don't pray, I don't see anything. So, the composition of that for everybody for and for everybody's life and as watchmen in our communities so we're not watching only for ourselves and our families usually we're watching for the people around us for the place that we have been placed in so you, you somewhat have it in a different sequence Jesus says watch and pray but you are saying you pray and then you watch. That's that's how it happens for me. But then if if it's circular, because you're praying, watching, watching, praying, it just the, the circle closes. So I don't think you can actually cut it because both of them are happening 
really, um, I, like I was saying to you, there's some people who, like you, will be praying and at the same time watching. So you are awake and you are getting like open revelations. You are, sometimes I hear things, but mostly my own scene is when I'm asleep. So, so I'm, I, I pray and then I sleep and then um, I get information. Okay, thank you. If I will are you here? Don't take five minutes. Yes, I, I just joined. So meaning what? <laughs> meaning you are not here, or meaning what exactly? Is, what what do I? What does it matter whether you joined ten years ago or joined now? Uh, <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> I'm here, sir. <laughs> okay, so you are here, even though you just joined. Uh, what is prayer, Malibu? Did you hear the question? Hello? Did you hear the question? No, no, no. The network was uh, hanging. Whose network? Yours or mine? I'm not too sure, but I was. you are freezing here. What is prayer? Prayer. Wow. Never, never thought about it. Never. What, what, what is prayer? I think um, for my own understanding, prayer is being in a place where you are able to commune with God and express it both in the way of communication, in the way of a conversation and in the way of meditation. Please explain, because your grammar is a bit too much. Well, uh, oftentimes people will say the only way you can pray is to perhaps, when you wake up in the morning, you go down on your knees and you are uh, you know, reciting either the Psalms or the Lord's Prayer, uh, which obviously is also part of it, but... Uh, it's recitation prayer. Yeah, recita uh, recita recitation. You are reciting uh, like the Psalms or the words of, uh, yes, they are, they are all forms of prayers. They are expressions of thoughts towards God. That is also prayer if you are reading the Psalms. Yes, it's also prayer. In my, in my understanding is the state, because I mean, prayer is, is to whom it is directed to. So it's a, it's a focused oh, you, mind. You didn't write the Psalm. Well, but the spirit of the Psalms, we obviously align with your own spirit. And it's, they are both words and prayer is expression that is both verbal and non-verbal. In the state of mind, what I, uh, uh, because uh, even in the dreams, you, you pray in the dreams, you know, it is bringing to before the Father, whatever petition you have, and also expression and communication and i know in the law in the law palace they always say i have a prayer my lord and then they push that as the case might be uh well for me that is i won't say that so much as prayer because prayer in my own understanding is conversation or exchange of communication that is centered and focused on god yeah but if you say, that is prayer for me. If you say it's conversation how can you use somebody else's words to have a conversation well, I can use somebody else's words to have a conversation because the words that a person expresses um, also, you know, I, I, I identify with the emotions or with the spirit of those words. Like, for example, uh, and I'm saying this in all humility, uh, I enjoy the way you pray. So a lot of times uh, it's, it's easier, it's, it's one lens that acts from you. 
times when I'm watching TV and somebody's praying, I like to watch. That's huh? what I'm asking you. That no, is, but you are saying that. How do you pray somebody else's work? Prayer. What I'm, what I'm, what I'm trying to learn from you is this. For instance, you know, sometimes there are some books where people have written prayers. Yes. Can you use those books and just read the prayers to God and you say that's prayer? Yes, I read those. I use those books. I, I see that's prayer. Why is it prayer? Somebody else's something, something that someone someone else wrote and how did it to God? Well, because I, I in my own opinion, I, I think a lot of things that we <laughs> we read to God or present to God, they seem to be uh, they seem they seem to all have a common denominator. So, my Lord, my God, give me deliverance because I'm asking you for your favor. I can write that out and then I find a book of prayer, maybe an MFM book of prayers and the rest of that. And then that same line of words, uh, maybe deliverance will come to me by the fire of God and all that. So, for all of that still aligns with the denominator, which is deliverance. And so, for me, it's not so much the other person's own words or writings. It's the state of my mind and to whom I'm expressing it to. So I consider it as prayer because it's actually God's word. Let me, let me humanize it. It might be foolish because we are talking about God. So you want to write me a letter or you want to write to a loved one a letter. And so you copy a letter that somebody has written and you send it to that person. Would that be acceptable? In my own opinion, it would be acceptable because I can ask somebody to write me a, I, I can ask somebody to write me a poem that will help me. As, I mean, Valentine is on the corner. I might not be able to write lovely poems. And I mean, Yemis is, an, is a writer. And also, I say, okay, Yemis, please write me one lovely poem. And when she writes and gives to me, I look at the poem. I can say, ah, Yemis, this line doesn't, can you write this line this way? Or can you do this? Because those words, don't align with my own spirit. So in that same understanding, I can, the words you might use to pray to God as your, as your words of prayer or the Psalms, I can adopt and adapt uh, for my own words and then it, you grow. So I, 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 I can get somebody to write a letter, of, of, of a, a, a letter to a loved one as long as the words of those letters align with my own thoughts or conviction. Why not? Is the loved one that receives it now. All right, let, let us see if other people share your view. Um, let me call on Sam Ukwa. Sam Ukwa good, good evening, you? church. Good evening. Good evening. Yes. We're talking about God, but we are being foolish. We want to look at it, first of all, from the, from the human perspective. You want to write a, a love letter to to Christine. Would it be acceptable for you to copy somebody else's letter and send it to her? Uh, definitely not, from my point of view. Why? Not? Um, because I want to write a love letter to Christine. It is about what I am thinking about Christine what I am feeling about Christine. So whether I am eloquent or not, I use my own language to express what I feel, how I feel to the person that I'm feeling it to. Therefore, it cannot work for me to go look for what somebody else has written, you know, and begin to, uh, uh, begin to uh, see if it, it works for me because the, the simple truth is that whatever it is that I want to tell Christine uh, is from me. So anyhow it will come out from me that will express what I feel towards Christine is what is going to be right for me. It, it, there, there, doesn't, there, isn't, there isn't a specific kind of pattern. I know this relates to uh, prayer, the question you've been asking. Let me say this, let me say this before we move on. From a personal point of view, I would never accept what Stephen said. That is, my wife is going to write a letter to me and she copies somebody's letter and says, this is rubbish. I will throw it out. But is it acceptable with God? 
Okay, let's look at it from this point of view. Um, first, about, as, about prayer, to me, what is prayer to me, first of all? Um, to me, prayer is the heart's condition towards God. Meaning that whatever you feel in your heart towards God, you know, that communication, it, like I said earlier, it does not have to have any specific uh, parameters that oh, you must be facing the east or the south or the north, or you must be, or you must be bowed down, or you. Must, I mean, you can actually be sitting in a bus and you are communicating with God, and <clears throat> it's and it is not because it's not necessarily when you begin to speak in those kind of heavy, heavy language of. Oh, Almighty Father, the ancient of days, the, the, I am that. I, all those things that we have uh, we have gotten used to from hearing a lot of people. There's, there are there are there is a time that one may we, one may be led, led to speak that way. There is all. If we look at the fact that we are supposed to be praying constantly, cease without ceasing which means that your heart's condition must be tuned to God. It's not every time you are sitting in a bus, your mind is going, oh, the heavenly father, the ancient of days and all that. No, there are times you will commune with God and you can talk to God like a person. The same way he can talk to you the way he wants. You know, when he is going to talk to you, he calls, sometimes he will call you, Femi, do this, do this. Femi, this is what I think. This is what I want you to do. This is what I'm, I'm, I'm talking about. So in such situations, you are still in communication with God. And as far as I'm concerned, it is still, it is still prayer. And it is conversational in that circumstance. But there are different circumstances where the, 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 the manner of speaking would be different. Therefore, if we consider that we are praying ceaselessly, it means that we are constantly in communication with God. So I feel it is the heart's condition towards God. Now, as for whether it is acceptable to God to use somebody else's uh, words to pray, I would only think of that in, in the context of what Jesus Christ said. Jesus Christ said, and when we want to pray, we should pray like this. And he gave us certain words, our Father which art in heaven. So, but outside of that which Jesus Christ has given as a sample of what we can say to God, you know, I am not so sure that I, I would be, I'm not so sure that it's such a, uh, um, it's, it's such, it's, I'm not so sure if it's quite appropriate to pick the words of, of somebody else and then present it to God because I do not know how, how real that would be coming from the person who is speaking somebody else's words. I don't know how, that, how real that would be to the person you are directing the prayer to. But if we are going according to that which Jesus Christ has given, I, I don't have any problem. That I think is fine. So if I, if I want to, to spend time with God and I just open the Bible and I start from Psalm 1, and I just continue reading the Psalms. Am I praying to God? Read Psalm 1, Psalm 2, Psalm 3, Psalm 4, Psalm 5, Psalm 6, Psalm 7, Psalm 8. Is that praying? You are no, you are studying the word of God. <laughs> okay, Sam, <Sam>, thank you. <laughs> okay. Ah, Sam Nawa. Okay. Um <laughs> Um, Uncle Wande. Uncle Wande, yes, sir. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was waiting for you, my turn. I was waiting patiently. Okay. I wanted to say something. Yes. Pertaining to what I do. Pertaining to what I do, music. I wanted to say that, does that mean that Everybody should be a composer of songs. For example, we should stop singing hymns that have been written. 
and songs and beautiful songs that have been written. Let's stop singing them because they are not our words. Let's start composing our own words if we need to pray to God. Because they are prayers as well in themselves. Are you, are you praying when you are singing hymns? Yes, you are. You are, you are praying two times. Lord, you are praying two times. Always. Is, that, is that praying? Yes, Praise yes. Lord. They say a, 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 a hymn notice, so a, a, a singer prays twice. Who He's praying this? the word and also singing it. Who says this? Which, which part of the Bible did he say that? <laughs> I was just thinking. I was just thinking aloud because from what I'm saying now, I if I most of the songs, most of the scripture I learned, and as a choir boy and a choir master now, most of my prayer is made through singing. Is made through playing, through singing. Most of the Bible I know is not just only reading. Most of the Bible I know, most of the scriptures, I won't say most of the Bible I know, most of the revelation of scripture I know came through anthems that I learned as a child I'm and that I'm learning that. every day. But I'm saying that is that prayer. It is. It is prayer. It is prayer because when I sing it, but I say, except the Lord build the house, the labor works for them that build it. Except the Lord keeps the city, the watchman wake but in vain. I learned that as a seven-year-old boy. Is that a prayer? <laughs> wait now. I'm, wait now. I'm just giving you an example. Okay. It's a prayer somehow. Because you are praying to God that I'm not the one that watches the city. I'm not the one that labors to, to build the house. It is you. So you're using those words to tell God that I need you. I need you every hour. I, it's not by my might that I will watch the city or build the house. Those are prayers. <laughs> They're prayers. Why don't you just say prayers. it? Why don't you just say it the way you are saying it? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I can say it now. Why not? So why, why do you have to say, except the Lord build the house? <laughs> Because, because the, the because as a as a music enthusiast, in, in, in fact, so if I even go beyond just singing it at times, I play. I just put it. I just go on YouTube or those days of CD. Just slot it in, and then the meaning. But you are ministering to God. I meditate. That's the difference between ministering to God. You are a minister of God. There's a difference between ministering to God and praying to God, isn't there? That's what I'm saying. I'm praying two times. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Wendy, let, me, let me ask you something, one day. Um, you, you don't like talking to God in prayer. I love it. I love it. Okay. But is prayer, is prayer also listening to God? Yes. Yes. How do you do yes. that? Okay. For example, in the past two weeks, I'm just giving this example. I've been moved, I've been groaning in prayer. And then within that time, I could see the movement of God by listening to Thanksgiving songs. And when I did that, I was now reflecting. God was talking to me. Things were manifesting. And I shared some of it with you. God was, God was talking to me. Things were manifesting. I could see miracles happening. Even I see if it was happening right in front of my eyes. And then I, as I was reflecting, I was saying, oh, I did this wrong. And that was God talking to me. At, at, at other times, he was telling me, Oh, this is why I allowed you to do this. And this is what I want you to do with this. It is also listening to God. It's not just you talking only. God also talks to us and we listen. No, but you know, you know uh, a conversation is it's not somebody talking, another person talking. It is, you know, it is a to and fro kind of situation. Yes. Yes. Uh, 
should his prayer a conversation with God. It was Stephen that introduced this concept earlier on. Okay. Yes, it's a conversation. Yes. It's a conversation. How do we make it a conversation? Because a lot of the time we're just praying and then we say in Jesus' name, Bosa. Then we leave. <laughs> I, I, okay, I think the way we can make it a conversation basically is when we study the word. Because God talks to us a lot in the word. He talks to us in the Bible. He, he review, we, because in the nature of God or the we are studying the word. Mm. Now we can pray through studying the word, Daddy. I, I sorry, <laughs> Femi. We can pray through studying the word. How yes, we, we can. We can. For example, we 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 tell before we start the exercise before we start the spiritual exercise. Say, God, Father, talk, talk to me from your word. And we can align. You know that we used to do it, even in early wings. I remember, ah, there's some, there's some very um, deep prayers that you make during deliverance. Those deliverance services. And you will raise a song. You raise a song and you raise a prayer. Or sometimes you raise a never, word. You, never, what was, never use me as an example of anything. Why it, would I use you as an example? Is this absolutely? What is absolutely? Why would I use as an example? No, no, where no. were where were in the same fellowship? No, 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 no. The only no, no, no. example is Jesus. Well, you can not use. You can't use me as an example of anything. What do I do? I'm not using you. I'm not using you as a tool. Or as a Lord, or as a, as a, I'm using, when I say example, there are things that I see that I can emulate from. That's why I'm saying that. I'm not using you so that I can praise you or anything. There are things, uh, that's why I said the deep, 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 deep moments for me, because I could see the move of God. When you, when those prayers, maybe I shouldn't have mentioned you. Maybe that's the mistake I made. When those prayers were made, you know, there was some when when those prayers those sessions we have the the the, the prayer will be the the a song will be raised I think when, when you mention the names of God and you say something like is a banner and they start singing a song a song about banner and then we start making those prayers they are so deep and the 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 they touch, they touch me deeply. So I think prayers can be made through, through singing and through the word of God. Thank you, thank you, Wendy. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, first of all, they can. Good evening. Festos, are you with us? Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. We are, we're, 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 we're having a discussion on the meaning of prayer. What does prayer mean to Festos? No, prayer to me, it means. Um, is is a place where I have a discussion with God. Who is that? That's it. Yeah, that is is a place where we have discussion. Oh, uh, the place where I, I have discussion with God. At the same time, is a place where I also have to pour my heart onto Him. So it's a place where we, we talk everything. Uh, I talk everything that I know. Having a discussion with God. Um, okay, the, the value is he, he, yes, he, he, he is the author. He knows every single thing. But it's also good for most of the time uh, when you 
when um, you you have to let him know some certain things, even though he has he has he has known, but well, you have to tell him because he he expects you to open your mouth and talk to him. Uh, and I'm my question. I, and I'm going there and um, I land land the plane. Feel the value the value. When you talk to him, that you have it, mm -hmm. you feel better and you feel well. Have you finished? Yes, the, 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 the benefit is that once, once you have the conversation with him, there is a, a, a deep relief that you have. Like you have given someone to your body and what you have in mind. After talking to him, you have hand over every single thing to him, and then you have that relief. All right, thank you. Yeah, there, there, there is your system is a bit shaky. So we some some parts you, you went off. Mr. Deleke. Yes, sir. Yeah, for uh, when I was thinking about the question that he has, uh, what is prayer? So when I think deeply, I think that uh, Prayer, to me, prayer can be, we can, uh, it's a little different from uh, conversation with God. You know, conversation with God can be personal, you know, talking to God personally, that's different. Then prayer can be that we are standing in a gap for somebody or we are, as, as the scripture says, that the, uh, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous, you know. Uh, we can, uh, and again, where it says that two, where two or, or three are gathered in my name, when we pray about something, it will come to pass. Those things are when we pray for the sick, for instance, we pray for the sick, join prayer for the sick, or we are standing in a gap for somebody, that is prayer, requesting for somebody. Pray you know, can, praying all by yourself, that's not prayer. I'm not, I'm not saying that praying by yourself is not prayer. I'm just saying that I'm trying to Differentiate it from from a conversation with God. Okay, praying. If you pray on your own, you can you can pray like as you are praying for somebody now. For instance, it's different from when you are talking to God. You know, praying for somebody regarding one thing or the other, standing in a gap for people, pray for nation, pray what for. Is the between praying for somebody and talking to God. Well, talking, uh, talking to God, my my just be. Might just be that, uh, uh, yeah, you ask God for something and He replied you. You know, talking to God is when you talk. There's there's a response, you know, about something and He, he responded. Or when you are you are you are some yeah, so, so, yeah. that will no response. Mm, right, right. We, pray, we we even though there might not be a response immediately, but we know that as we pray, God has answered. You know, for instance, as I was like, like uh, let me give you an example. Today I was going out, I was looking for fuel. It was just everywhere was so blocked. Every you know, got to the level that I have to start talking to God, Father Lord, make a way for me. I need to buy for you. As I was saying it, I Your, your system used to be a lot better than this. I don't, I don't know what happened. Most I don't know what happened. I stopped hearing Dr. But anyway. Um, so we came to repair my system, but I don't think they did a good job. Yes, yeah, me see. I just wanted to say, um, again, there are all kinds of things that happen to me. I, I, for me, all of these things are prayer, but I just wanted to give an example. So um, in the mornings, 
and it's let's say over the last couple of months maybe i'm standing in the kitchen then i can hear um something like um sorrow so in my own opinion i feel like it's it's some it's something that's projected and my response always has to be the word of god so i will say the bible says that the those who follow after other gods their songs will be multiplied so that is in its way of deflecting the thing back that's prayer for me and i'm not having a conversation i am i'm sending something back Have you finished? <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> okay, well, I don't think the discussion precluded what you have said. But the question is, I, I, I'm not, there is no exclusive parameter that we're trying to establish about prayer. There are different types of prayer, different ways of praying. That's what we want to explore, one of them is when prayer is a conversation. Sometimes it might not be. Benedict. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Charles. Good evening, sir. Yeah, I, I believe you have something to say. Yes, um, I was just um, trying to analyze um, the uh, difference between praying and also having connection with God, whereby um, I think praying has to do with um, God, Jesus taught people how to pray. And at the same time, we also I can also be saved, we can also separate it from having connection with God. Someone who has connection with God is a friend of God. And prayer, anybody can just come home and pray. Or believing in God also. Because everybody prays. Everybody prays to God. Everybody prays in the name of Jesus. But I think prayer is a little bit more than, conversation is a little bit, you are taking it more than just praying. If I, if I, if I pray to someone now, Meaning, I want God's like you wanted something from God. That's why you have to pray. That you just say, okay, pray for this. Pray that this you happen. Pray for that you happen. But having conversation with with God, it means you now see God as a friend, or you see Him as a father, or you see Him as a as a brother, or you see Him as someone that you can talk to when there is any issue, or when you are going through challenges. That one can. That as it level to come. On that question, you can also enter enter prayer mode. You can because prayer is everything. You can fall into prayer because you are discussing with God and only we just pray to pray or something just come out and say, "Okay, you are praying pray in the light of this situation." But that also you cannot be discussion with Jesus or you cannot discuss anything with God. Discussion is a different way, prayer is a different, they are just different. You don't really do okay, Benedict, Benedict, you are, you, are, you are saying the same thing again and again. Now, okay. is, is, is spiritual warfare prayers scriptural? It's also part of prayer. Explain. Who are you praying to when you are doing spiritual warfare? You are asking God to do something. Because you are now in a place of where um, you see from God. Spiritual warfare prayers, you are asking, you are not asking God anything. You are challenging the devil. I think I'm, that's what I have to say in regards to that. This color can be anything. 
It can be. I'm talking to God about football. I'm talking to God about a, a, I'm asking a, you now about spiritual warfare. Yeah, I'm saying that one is part of prayer also because you are not fighting the war alone. You don't even have the power to fight the war alone. You need someone who is more powerful than the person that you are fighting to join you to fight. And in that kind of battle, you are talking to him. Who are you talking to? Is prayer to God or is it a fight against the devil? To the will, you are not praying, it's no more discussion, it's now prayer. All right, Benedict, let me ask the same question to, to Sam. Sam, spiritual warfare prayers are they prayer? Um, <clears throat> I would not think so. Um, reason being that I said earlier, my, my understanding of prayer is the heart's condition towards God. Now, spiritual warfare is not about the heart's condition towards God. Spiritual warfare is where one is, at, you know, authority over serpents and scorpions as he has told us standing in a position of authority to declare um, um, the, the power of God to subdue spiritual uh, uh, opposition so in that situation um, spiritual warfare you 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 would have you, 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 spiritual warfare is what is supposed to happen after you have done the prayer because it is in the it is in that place of prayer that you get that the all the armor and um, and um, attack and defense mechanisms that you are going to use it comes from there so when you have done that then you come it we can see the example in Jesus Christ from time to time we hear that he went away somewhere by himself to pray. We know that that was communion with the Father, communication with the Father. By the time because you don't you don't just come out and start, you know, just start telling people on the streets commanding you in the name of Jesus, commanding this and that. If you have not gone to do the homework behind. So the spiritual warfare is what happens after the, is what is supposed to happen after the prayer has taken place. So please, that, please, hold, hold on, hold on. Explain to me, how did Jesus engage in spiritual warfare? Uh, in terms of, in, in the case of Jesus Christ, it's, it's not really warfare. You know, warfare is where it's like two, it's like two fighting. But Jesus Christ's son is that he just, he decimates every, Opposition. It's not a. It's not a. It's not a warfare like that. He just speaks. So, so why are we? Happens. So why are we engaged in warfare if he didn't do it? That spiritual warfare, as we know it to be, is something that has been devised by some church authorities. <laughs> However, I, I am referring to, I am referring to the authority he gave us mm -hmm. to. You know, to the, that he said he has given us authority over all powers and principalities, over to the trample on serpents and scorpions. He has given us that authority, so that allows us to speak to circumstances the way he also used to speak to circumstances when he was physically present. But you know, when we go into the uh, description of spiritual warfare, we have now gone into um, something. Uh, something else designed by certain uh, um, religious leaders, which is which deviates from what I am talking about, which is the authority that God uh, God has granted us. All right, uh, thank you, uh, Miss Yandang. Comfort. 
Hello, sir. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening. everyone. Should we challenge the devil in the altar of prayer? <laughs> Should we challenge the devil in the altar of prayer? That's what I asked. Yes. Um, challenge in the sense, please, I ought to know the challenge. Hey, you are the one that is answering the question now. So when, when you said yes, what did you think of this? No, 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 I'm like, yes, that was the question you asked, not challenge, like putting him to a test. Fighting the devil. Or challenging, maybe like a fight, or yes. you understand? So the devil, to... Yes, the daughter of prayer. Okay, like the fight on. Yes. Hmm. Okay. Have you ever fought the devil in the altar of prayer? Okay, yes, I have. I have, yes. What happened? How did you fight him? Um, is, prayer, okay, so... is, is, is prayer about the devil or is it about God? So prayer is about God. So and the fight was what does the devil have to do with it? Okay, so the fight I'm talking about was about, um, it came like in the form of a witch and I, I prayed, just basically prayed. So I know it, the prayer was, so that's why I'm still confused. It's just a simple prayer. He should leave there, blah, blah, blah. And then the witch disappeared. So yes, if it's that challenge, I think it's acceptable. Well, prayer mostly is about God. It's about God. You pray that the witch should disappear. Yes, I was just on my way and then I saw I encountered the witch. <laughs> and the following morning... No, but doctor, I'm not joking. The following morning, I found oh, this person. Oh, 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 I, I didn't say you were joking. <laughs> <laughs> please, what does the witch look like, please? <laughs> that was the woman form. So I think it was even God sending me a message that this person that I know is a witch. Do you understand? Because the following day, the first person I saw early in the morning standing by my bed was this person I saw in my dream, the witch. Wonderful. And she just smiled at me and left. Standing so, by your bed? I'm telling you. In real life or this was a vision? In real life. When I woke up in real life, <laughs> was my friend standing looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was it a family member? <laughs> no. I was in boarding house. I was in school. Okay. Mm. All right. Uh, but let me ask you one more question. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> so, sorry, sir. Uh, she needs to be sure. Are you sure it was not Lady Koi Koi that was standing by her bedside? Who is that? Who is Lady Koi? Who is Lady Koi Koi? Who, who is Lady Koi Koi? That's not because he asked me. He needs to elaborate more. <laughs> uh, who, who, who is Lady Koi Koi? So, no, I was just asking whether she was, she's not, whether she's sure that it's not just Lady Koi Koi. No, was she knows... yeah. Okay. Yeah. Who is Lady Koi Koi? This is a personal uh, so, discussion. This is a personal discussion you. between the two of you. Don't come and confuse us uh, with your with your lady lady koi koi one. Lady koi koi. Uncle Femi, you don't know Lady Koi Koi. Who is Lady Koi Koi? I don't know. <laughs> Who is the person? Lady Koi Koi. The lady that walks around that night in high heels, you know? Lady Koi Koi, like like you know. Walks around at night Especially in high heels. Has, has been disturbing you people. <laughs> in boarding house, she walks around the boarding house. Okay, she's in boarding house. <laughs> she walks around. But, 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 but she said he's a real person that was standing beside her bed. Well, this is not a vision now. <laughs> so people are talking as if, as if this lady Koi Koi is in so many boarding houses. I think it's just one of Smiles that they talk tell you like when you're going to boarding school, you know. And yeah, they tell you to be aware of it, Lady Koi Koi. Yes. Well, this is my first time of hearing about it. Have you seen Mami Water as well? <laughs> uh, I've not seen Mami Water. <laughs> <laughs> uh, comfort. <laughs> should yes, you sir. should should we ask God to deal with our enemies in prayer?
So for me, I have never done that. All I do is to ask God to deliver me from them. I don't just encounter them from their plots and all of that. But you not don't, deal. You don't, you don't think that we should way. ask him to deal with them? No, nah, the deal is should be changing them. Okay, thank you. Juju, are you with us? Is uh, you what is my phone connection is bad, but I keep keeps breaking. But I'm here. Okay, Juju, what happens when women pray? Because did you hear the Can question? Can you paraphrase so that I know what? I, I think I heard the question, but I need to understand where the question is coming from because I didn't hear the a lot question, of what the, I the, the, said. The question before, is coming from so me. So that I'm sure what I want to say. The question is coming from me. What happens when women pray? This was a seminar book written by a woman. You can Google it. The title is What Happens When Women Pray? So I'm asking you, what is it that happens when women pray? Is there anything special about the prayer of a woman as opposed to that of a man? Are you still with us or are you somewhere else? I don't even know she has disappeared. Let me see what happens when women pray. Ah, a lot of things. Though. Okay, let's hear them. Oh, yeah. Number one. Uh, well, I believe that women have a connection to, they are, they're, they're a lot more intuitive than men are. So um, <clears throat> they're able to quickly address a situation. A anyway, this sounds like a generalization, but I know more women who are, as in those kinds of very quick, intuitive pray, people praying people. Yeah, generalizations are generalizations because they are true. Okay than their husbands. So um, they're the ones who get the alarms for when something's gonna happen. So they quickly raise the prayer. Um, yeah, so. Is that all? No, well, <laughs> that's all I can think of. No, that, yeah, I mean, you started by saying many things happen, and then you just gave us one or two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There also, um, I was, I was reading the, the, I was reading a book about women's roles in the home and how they are like the boundary walls. So they're protective. Their, their prayers are also protective, as well as how do you say? What I said before was that if like an attack is coming, you. Yeah, so it's the same thing. So their, their prayers are protective. Their prayers are, um, I, I don't know. I, I, in my mind, I know that lots of things happen, but to, I can't think of, I can't now put them all. It's something that I have to think about for. Okay, thank you. It looks like some men know the answer. Oh yeah. Uh, Dotu, what happens when women pray? I, I, I believe that uh, God answers very fast. Why is that? I believe. Where, but, because, but when, when men pray, he answers very slow. He also, he also answers, but I think women, they are, they are very emotional. Very, because I, I remember in my, in my growing up in Ibadan, most of the church, there's no church I go to, it is women. They were just too, you know, it was, I don't know. Exactly. 
Well, it was, you know, it was one of the first shots I did. When I there, are one, there, are, there are more men in healing wings than, always in more men in healing wings than women. Because when I came to healing wings, it was dead. And one of the, and that, that thing, make create an impression in me. There must be something about this place. Women, men all around, ah, <laughs> you know. But I also believe that women, because I know from my mom, she said, she said, she pray, I can't, she pray every, every, every hour, every seconds. It was just, it was just alarming. So everywhere, women, it was women, alarming. <laughs> you know, it just, it just, men are just too, there's a church in Ibadan that is only for women. When you go there, you can see about one million women. They do service in the morning, six o'clock. You see all of them everywhere. Ah! You know, it's just, it's just women are, their men, their hearts are too, I don't know, they are too strong like rock. God break those hearts. So break those rock before men will now come down, you know. But women, before you just say praise the Lord, they are there. <laughs> and, <laughs> all of that. Before you say praise the Lord, they are there. Look at that on Sunday when Landy prayed. Landy was praying that when you asked Landy to pray. Ah, well, that our prayer was just saying, whoa, it was hard. I said, this woman, she's a prayer warrior. I said it. But then somebody, you know, somebody, somebody told me that the prayer was too long. Well, no, you better, you better look at the prayer. It was long, but look at break the prayer down. It touches every part. She touches every part, line upon line, precept upon precept. You. I agree with you. I was offended when the person told me that was too long. Yes, yeah, me see. Well, I, for me, I always I, I don't I, I don't like it when people label someone as a prayer warrior because some people have the power of oratory. It has nothing to do with so in the way that one expresses prayer now determines the efficacy of the prayer. I, don't, I mean, I don't know. I think all of that is tied into, you know, the emotional, because I know I know prayers, children that pray, they don't necessarily know how to pray, but God hears their prayer. So I don't think it's in the, in, in the sort of being able to make people feel like, I don't no, know. No, but you know, but one can hear what you are praying about. Yeah, but... I mean, I have to agree with one day that I think I don't remember there was there was a particular day when you were praying. I think it was when we when you the first ever um or rather the you know the first uh physical uh midnight service, the monthly one, the first yeah. one that when we came back. Now I could hear a takeover. So that I can agree with. So, so you, you can hear somebody praying, then you hear a takeover. You know that that person is no longer praying. That's different, right? To, what, what do you mean by a takeover? That person is not the person praying anymore. You know it. So you, you, can, hear, you can hear the Holy Spirit actually praying through that person. That, for me, Again, it's not about oratory, is that I can actually hear something has shifted. As opposed to you are, you are, you, you, oh, so the person's praying, so everybody's a ah, prayer warrior. Uh, I don't know. Anyway. Okay, Benedict. I think for, sorry, I think for women, they are, because they are weaker voices, they are open to spiritual gifts. They are they have spiritual gifts, and the most time they give all to God. They give all, and when they are when they are leading, it's no matter because of their they are little, You know, God always have this issue around children, women. Once or is something is weak, he prefers to use the weak things than to use things that people think. If when is praying, you know, how is a strong one is supposed to be doing it. But when something that you know that we are not think that supposed to be happening is happening, God will work with that thing. Because they are weak, they are and God use their weakness. In what, in what, way, are, in what ways are women weak? Ah. <laughs> Doctor, in each other's service, according to tradition, I don't know to say women are not allowed. And it's also that men 
men, um, I guess, they are the thing that God uses most. Children also, they are not given opportunity. As they are the thing that God will use most. And then when you in, in, when it comes to family setting, once the woman is strong in the Lord, the family move. But when you have a weaker woman in the house, with, with no time, the mama has fallen. All right, thank you. Ipalibo Lawson. How do you need to be? Ipalibo, are you still there? I, I, I remember a story that was being told some time ago that uh, an old man was called to either sing or recite the Psalms or something. I don't remember how that, uh, the details of it. Yeah, uh, one, one recited the psalm and, uh, yeah. and, and people praised him. Another one recited the psalm and people started crying. And yeah. one, one yeah. said he knew the psalm. <laughs> okay, all right, go on. Yeah, so you, you, you know the psalm, but I know the, the, the person behind the psalm or something of that nature. He knows the psalm, uh, but he knows the shepherd. Okay, go on. He knows the shepherd, yeah. Thank you very much. Wow. Uh, I'm, I think I'm going old. I, I mean, I don't understand why I don't seem to. But you are, you are look, you seem to be a little bit much more younger these days because you remember better than I do. God bless you. Anyway, so uh, my understanding to a large extent has to do with the fact that um, a lot of us today uh, have seen prayer to be something competitive. And it's interesting when you asked uh, me this question. Why do I say that? Uh, there was something I wanted to share in the group, but somehow I, I restrained myself because uh, I didn't know what it was going to create, whether I was going to get a backlash from you or uh, some people would not just even mind. The story of a lady who wanted to put together a prayer group and then she pulled people from Banana Highland, Ikoi, VI, Lekki, and the rest of that. So everybody goes to the first person who offered to, and she is from Iyano Kwaja. And the first person who offered to uh, uh, host them, perhaps in Banana Island, so to speak. So they all, she, has, she gets to the house and everybody comes in seated. And uh, the people who are coming off from the island were coming in their gym wears. And then the prayer was supposed to run for perhaps for maybe like for an hour. And then the people that were praying were praying, Lord, we thank you. We're praying for different issues that this man should be able to pay for vacation. Uh, something and then why she is praying for something else why they were just praying you know without necessarily shouting or raising up their voices she was on the floor rolling and all that and then the author now says at the end of the day that afterwards he said that some people night vigil i think some people went back home to rest and went upstairs to sleep while she was still rolling up on the floor eventually she said to herself that when she's put, putting together a prayer meeting she will go to Yanokpaja, go to uh, Akonjo and the rest of the places to bring people who, it looks like their issues or problems are the same, not some people who share. And then I, I got thinking and I said, when you call somebody a prayer warrior, or sometimes people will say that some people will pray and they are shouting, oh, this is, you're a group. And then in the mind of some people, it's like, is it that God is deaf that he can't hear? And I remember there was a time you brought up an issue that ah, perhaps is the person's predicament that is making the person shout for help or for deliverance and all that. So uh, depending from where the person is coming from, um, at the end of the day, the prayer is not to any of us. It's actually directed to the father. Uh, whether the person is shouting or the person is whatever it is, it's still, like Sam said, it's still from the, from the state of the heart. So whether somebody is praying silently, somebody is praying uh, loudly and the rest of that, it is God who hears and determines that. So a prayer warrior, for me, I do not see it so much as, as something of a title. I mean, Landis prayer is interesting you brought that up. We, we talked about it, myself and some few people talked about it on Sunday. I personally, I was, I was, I was lifted in spirit and I had not experienced uh, landing prayer in that, with that kind of depth or that kind of passion. So for me, I saw, I experienced it more as an elevation. 
All right. I didn't even, I was not even mindful of whatever is long or short. Uh, for me, as long as you're in service, it's just a dedicated period of time. So, but the, the, the title of a prayer warrior, that, that's the person that, you know, uh, that, that prayed and then something is answered and all that. I, I'm not too sure about that. I, I'm not too sure about that, you know, because God will listen to the whisper as well as he will listen to the scream. Stephen, let us get something straight. There are some people that God listens to, and there are some people he doesn't. There are some people who, when they pray, God answers immediately. And there are some people who, when they pray, God might not answer or take some time. Now, a lot of it has to do with the relationship that you have with God. So, um, Kalajai, okay, utters a prayer and God answers like that. Mokai utters a prayer and God answers like that. Some other people might utter a prayer and God does not answer. You go to him and he prays for you, you're going to get immediate answers because he is the one. Because he is dedicated, he has devoted time to God. He has spent time with God. I mean, I was, I, I, as, a, as a young Christian, I was amazed when Elijah came and says, he's not going to reign except by my word. I said, what kind of person is this one? And it was only much later on that I discovered in the New Testament that before he said that, he had sorted out the matter with God. Elijah had prayed that it should not rain, but he didn't say that in the Old Testament. He just came and said, it's not going to rain unless I say so, except at my word. So the person sometimes makes a difference. And there are some people that are indeed prayer warriors. Yes, uh, yeah, me see. But also, Mr. Ibaribu uh, Lawson was the one who God used to pray for my job. Ibaribu himself is a prayer warrior. He didn't know that. No, 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 no. no. It doesn't sound like that's what I'm saying. It's not the. He's not a prayer warrior. Ibaribu is not a prayer warrior. You are not. You are, you are, look, look. Let me tell you something. You have not. You've only started. You only started attending uh, midnight prayers. Huh? When Ibaribu leads the midnight prayer. He prays for one hour, non-stop. He prays, you know, I mean, and, and people don't pray like that unless they are used to prayer. Palibo is a prayer warrior. You didn't know that. <laughs> Palibo is a prayer warrior. He's coming, he's coming to tell us something else here. Don't but, but, but have to listen to him more. I beg, let's continue. Um, um, uh, Barabbas Bulus. Barnabas, are you with us? That's the problem with uh, healing. I see people on the screen, and you call them, they disappear. Uh, okay, one day. Have you disappeared as well? Yes, sir. Have you yes, sir. To, have you gone to London already? <laughs> 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 Back okay. in to go. Well, well, why? Why? How significant is a father's blessing on his children, and why? Wow. Um, I think it's very significant. If, if we read right from the Old Testament to start with, when um. Abraham blessed Isaac, Isaac blessed Jacob, Jacob blessed Joseph and his children. So there, there was a tradition of blessings such that it was so, it was so much expressed in Isaac and Jacob and Esau. Why is it, why is that the case? I think, I think God gave them the instruction to bless, to bless and to bless and not to curse. 
So I think if fathers and it doesn't it. apply to mothers. Because you 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 remember you remember that in the case in the case of Jacob, in fact, it was the mother yes. that put Jacob up to it and said, look, go and get the blessing instead of your brother, instead of your brother. I mean, you could say I if, think she, a, if she could give the blessing, she could have given it to Jacob, definitely. I think that the, 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 I think that the patriarchal um um, 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 tradition, because because even in the Bible, it is the fathers that are mentioned in the generations, and the generations that pass on the prayers is the is the fathers that are mentioned. There's some I don't know so much about the history, but I know that there is a tradition of passing down blessings from the patriarch even to the first son, most especially. Because uh, but he I, blesses- but, I, but, I, but there's also a tradition of passing down curses. Yes, yes, yes. From the father. <laughs> but if your yes. father, if your father has dealt in demonic, whatever it is, it will but follow in the, you. But, but in, the, in, the, in the community of God's children, it is the blessings we pass. You have to bring we it. We're not told, we're not told, we're not told. We're not told in history, the 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 generation of course has been passed, as much as the blessings. Especially in Israel, in the Commonwealth of Israel, it is the blessings that we are told about, and it, God kept saying it, bless and no, bless. because Don't because know. Jesus broke the curse. Even before then, even before then, even before that, in the Old Testament. We're not told, we're not, we're not schooled. They didn't sit us down and start schooling us that, oh, these are the causes from this generation to this generation. There were more blessings, more blessings. And I think Christ, uh, God said it in, in, in to the, Israel, the Israelites. He kept saying, tell them, when you, when you pray, always bless, do not curse. But you know that in the law of Moses, there are a lot of causes. Yeah, that I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Okay, Benedict, yes. you want to say something? Yes, regarding this um this question, color blessings uh, children. I think even there's also cause of stop. When a father causes children, the cause will suddenly come to pass until Jesus came into that. Tight before this time we stop back. Well, because because under Jesus, you, your father, you don't have you, you, only, you only have one father now, it's God. Yeah, yes. Until Jesus came into into Christian, that only really, that's only really the cause can be reversed. There is um is again there's a, there's a power that God put in in parents' mouth. And if you want your child, or anyone who wants to succeed, must bless the child. If you don't do that, don't expect your child to take to, to I will able to honor your father, to honor you when you are old. You don't say because it's like a give a, a, a take and give it something. When God is willing to honor your old, old people, honor your parents, but the parents must know that when the child is at younger age, you must start blessing him. You must start blessing him because I. Before this, before this question that you asked, and when you asked this, I was happy. I was someone that did join me. I was in my normal place, and I don't think only just brought this. I was just like, fathers should be blessing their children. Because when you bless your children, there's no way the blessing will come to pass in their life. And I'm looking at it from time of from time of Abraham. Abraham blessed Isaac the same way. Isaac. Isaac also blessed um, Jacob. Jacob also did the same thing to Joseph. Joseph also do the same thing to his children. The same way the, the, the twelve tribe of Israel, they are also must bless their children. When you have a child and you're always cursing because of one thing that he, he did wrong, the, the cause will come to pass. There is no way it will come to pass. In my own case, I tell you around even more that I say, don't curse your children, no matter what the is. Pray for them. Because parents have a way of saying this child is not uh, is doing badly, 
because he's, he's, he's not listening, he's not he's, he's way war. Yeah, we were saying some negative words to them. I grew up with that miss also. When I became a born again, when I become born again, I did one thing. I have to start asking because I know we open our mommy lots. And out of anger, she said all kind of thing. I started asking God to reverse so many things. Because I know we with the way we grow up, we do so many things that was wrong as the boys. And out of anger, she said so many things. I started asking God to reverse everything. Because he said out of anger. And since then till now, I always say, pray, don't swear for your children. Pray for them. When you pray, no, don't, don't go up as far as say you enemy. There's not like enemy. There's not like enemy. When you say you are saying for his enemy, who oh, you, you are using the enemy. In that you are saying for your children. No matter what, just find the way to pray. When you pray for them, they must be returned to the door of your prayer. God will show them because there's a the power, power in the tongue. I will have to say that. Thank you, Benedict. Yes, yeah, Missy. I just wanted to commend Benedict's insight. I think that he, you know, he said so much. But I also wanted to say, um, there's divine order in, in the house of God. So um, it's important. The Father's blessing is important. And you know, going by what Benedict says, I have to. I mean, this is something that I have to do. I have to rewind and think about the things I've said to my own kids, and um, you know, also use my mouth to undo them. But I think there's something about the Father's blessing. So, thank you. Who, there was somebody else that ran away. Who was the person? Okay, it was a his. He didn't want to say something. All right, let me see. Should, should, we, should, we, should we force her? To, okay, he's, do, you, do you have a comment you want to make? Yes. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Good evening, Charles. Good evening. Yes, I want to use this medium to thank God for my auntie. She always pray for all his children. Okay. That's, oh, that's my suggestion. Okay, all right. Thank you. Should parents force their children to pray? Let me see. Should parents force their children to pray? I don't, I don't even know how you can force somebody to pray. My parents forced my, me to pray. So, forget you know, about that one. Should you couldn't have you pray. Huh? Nobody can force you to pray. Yeah, they will force you. They will be, uh, sit down. They are, coming to, uh, they are praying tonight. We are sit down. At that time, I wasn't interested. You will see, every night, they will, they will sit down. We will pray together. Mm, well, you see, the thing is, I, I was part of that, and like I've said before, I think of, I think back to those times with very great fondness, and <laughs> no, I do. Um, Why? Because there was something there, which I can rewind and acknowledge that. But did you uh, like it at the time? I didn't dislike it. I just, I, I, I didn't. It's very difficult to say as a child because you you are distracted, so you'd rather be off to doing something else. So I, I didn't. I don't think that that's forcing somebody to pray. I just. I think it's. But sometimes we presented to be asleep. But my mind will come and wake us up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, that's not that's not forcing someone to pray. And you, you didn't have a choice. <laughs> if you had a choice, you wouldn't pray. Mm. Okay. Yes, Doctor. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I I don't know if it's we we we, we I don't know whether it's allowed to call it force force. Yeah, uh, it, it means that you are doing it yourself. That's why you are saying it. <laughs> I'm guilty of the same thing. Oh, yeah, that's true. Confess. Confess now. Confess quickly now, now, quickly. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, I've been doing it. I've been doing it. Uh -huh. Because I believe that they are, they are, they are, they are from age, uh, I don't know, I don't know, age one to age 10. They don't know their left from their right. 
So whatever you ask them to do, and whatever you do, they will do it. When I do VG, so well, they will be, uh, the children will say, ah, Daddy, that is waking up every night. I say, you are supposed to join me. When they come to meet me, I say, Daddy, we want to, we want one shoe. I said, have you, have you talked to God about it? That's why I used to tell them. It might be, I'm, I see if I'm asking them, I say, you have to talk to God about it first before you tell me. Say, I can't give you anything. When you talk to God about it, aha, everything will come, you know? And to be frank, there's a lot of things that God has done for us. That before before we before the thing came to pass, I told them go and pray about it. When the thing came, I will not remind them. I said, ah, have you forgotten? That I told you guys that you are telling me that you want this. You want? I said, I have forgotten. That I told you guys that let's pray about it. I, every day I used to say it. I say it to their hearing, because when I was my growing up, in fact, my mom would teach us how to do vigil. And when we are small, we will vigil every day. We will read Bible. We will give us script to read. I didn't know how important it is before, but now I understood the, the importance of it. So I wanted my children to, to go through it, to understand it. When they get to 12, I won't bother them again. I know that God will have taken over. <laughs> OK, well, all right. <laughs> uh, if lost. Uh, so me, 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 I'm a full supporter. You should force the child to pray. There are some things that well, his character you must learn by induction or by, by whatever it is. You must learn it too. Because uh, like you already said, I, I, I think I go back memory lanes. Uh, when I was staying with my big mom and dad in Port Harcourt, we, we are Baptists. It's a Baptist family. So you wake you up from go downstairs. Everybody must come downstairs. That one, you can't even have Sunday family lunch. I mean, family lunch together without ensuring that you have not marked your register <laughs> all through the week in terms of those prayers. And that, of course, you never liked them, but then again, you just realize that, hey, to a large extent, if not to a greater degree, that training helped a lot of us um, in our university days. Some of us, because of some of those trainings, we, we, were, we never got involved with uh, court issue. and. Uh, so it has its own benefit. My own position has always been that anything that is going to help you be closer to God, you just do it. I mean, midnight prayer, there are so many things you are saying about me that even me myself, I'm, I'm surprised. I mean, prayer warrior, uh, uh, Yemi yeah, was saying that. Honestly speaking, I look forward to the midnight prayers because um, uh, of recent, myself and Israel, uh, we... Every Wednesday or there about, there is a ministry that will pray for one hour. And I realized that over time now, I've become very uh, um, lazy um, in praying. So an opportunity to want to pray, you know, you take it up. Because sometimes uh, why you cannot be angry at God or you cannot feel disappointed at him. And then you feel reluctant and say, Father, what person don't they call you since all this time? Need the year pay. Other people own you will do. Ah, when is our own going to be and all that? But you just realize that these are part of the discipline of your relationship with God. So the opportunity to actually pray is something that a lot of us embrace and welcome. So if you have a dad or a mom, uncle, whatever it is, who forces you to pray? And usually it's for the first few minutes. You know, when the sleep is still there, sometimes some mothers, as you are praying, they are clapping hands, you are sleeping. The world, they will give you a resetting slap. That point, in the presence of God, you'll be like, ah. <laughs> Are we not supposed to be praying that you are slapping me in the presence? Is this, is God not here? And, but all of that just, teach, you, you see that you call it hard love or tough love. And then you grow up with that. And when you find yourself in, in, at the crossroad, those, those, those things is like you, you build res, uh, residues of, of, will I say, energy or something to fall back in that actually gives you, you know, a spark and then you are able to utter one or two prayers to God. And it's amazing. God responds. And God is very, very unusual. And he responds to some of the things you never imagined that he would respond to, you know. So anything that would take a man to pray, to lead you to prayer, is a plus for me. Oh, for me, that is my own position. <laughs> yes, but you are, you are talking now with understanding. Uh, we, we didn't have this understanding at that time. Yes, Mr. Dank. 
Yeah, good evening again. Yeah, good um, evening. Okay. I just want to contribute. I don't think, I don't believe in forcing a child to pray. Rather, teach a child to pray. Once you teach the child and the child knows the benefit of prayers, automatically nobody will force that. that it just becomes part of that child. So for me, I don't think I was ever forced to pray. I can't remember being forced to pray. Yeah, Rather, because, you, because you like to pray right from the beginning. Some of us did not. <laughs> oh, okay. no, 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 no. I got to like how to pray because I was taught to enjoy prayers. I was taught the benefit of prayers. So as I was saying, um, so my mom will have this morning devotion with us, right? She will wake you up to pray. And it's not, really, she will tell you, okay, you need to talk to God because he's the one that is giving you life. You understand, there's a need to thank whoever it is that is giving you this life that you are living. So by the time you start telling a child the benefits of prayers, you don't need to force the child. You see, you, you know what my problem was? My, my mother was, was, was a prayer warrior, let me put it that way. And you know, when she's praying, she'll be praying about Nigeria. She'll be praying and I'm thinking, come on. I mean, you know, nothing's gonna happen to Nigeria. What are you talking? <laughs> she'll be praying about things that are just, I'm thinking, what is all this about? I couldn't understand it as a child. And I would I I would rather do something else. Pardon? I said, my okay, no, because we had so many things. Oh, we're not privileged to have a lot, right? So if you need something, the first thing she will tell you is, ah, go and pray about it to tell God to provide. So maybe that was why. I know that maybe that helped. Okay. You understand what? Okay, you need to pray, and then we enjoyed it. And then she didn't dictate to us how you should pray. That's another thing we need to also teach children. Not say you not give pattern. They will need to just teach them the importance of prayer and don't dictate. So like me, along the line, I just wonder that I don't need to pray long prayer, just short prayer, and I'm good. My, my mother bought him books. So you know, she will sit us down and distribute all the hymn books. So yeah, him number one hundred or something. We will start singing. <laughs> hey, yeah, we see, yes. You're spoiling my memories. I have very fond memories. <laughs> I remember I remember Baba saying, um, ah, how come you people know how to sing that hymn? That's one of the most difficult hymns. And because of that, Felicia and I were, you know, we packed up every time he said, come and sing a hymn. But I wanted to tell a, um, a story of one of my mom's friends who gave me a pair of earrings. They were gold earrings. But as she was giving them to me, she sat me down and she said, oh, uh, let me read you this psalm and read it with me. Um, bless the Lord of oh my soul and all that is in me. Bless his holy, holy name. Bless the Lord of oh my soul and forget not his benefits. And in the rhythm of reading that psalm all the way to the end, I remember that it was like I was hearing a poem. And I carried that, I carried it with me. And there was just something about it. I think it was, maybe it was the attachment to the gift she gave me or the way that she read it, but it became a prayer. So I think I agree with comfort that it's the way sometimes people pray. They make it, because prayer can't be something that is bad or you don't want to do it. It's just the way that we sometimes you know, do things or offer things to people. I remember coming to this country and going to a French class and thinking, wow, why didn't I have French teachers like this in Nigeria? So I think, you know, we might have to have a different way of um, doing things. Yes, especially with children, especially um, the word of God is, is beautiful. There's just when it comes up in your spirit as well, there's something about it. So how can how can this be a problem for children unless the children let, have? Yeah, see, let, let me present this this way. Mathematics. Now, many children have bad math teachers, and if you don't have a math teacher that knows how to teach children math, they will hate math. Mm. 
you know, and, that, and that's going to be a problem throughout. They will not be, you know, but you can have a teacher that will make maths so exciting, make maths interesting, and the children will realize that maths is something that they can deal with. I'm just using that as an analogy for what you are trying to say. You have somebody who <laughs> maths. It's just incomprehensible to me, but she, you know, so, yeah. Okay, Ipalibo. Well, why I agree with uh, Comfort and YMC to the degree that some people have some parental background or teachings that are very different from some of us. Some of us were stubborn. So there were no other ways to be able to help you imbibe certain character than you know, <laughs> sitting down and then you must, it's like when you are a child and then those days where they have to give you account. My brother, my brother, my siblings. This one's my obedient children. Right? They, they will just give their camera to flow. You, oh, they will hold you and close your nose. It will enter by force. Oh, Nikami, <laughs> you <laughs> must eat the food. So, <laughs> in that, see, this is, they are, they are different strokes for different folks. But then, when you grow older, you look back. Some of us appreciate, we look back with laughter on our faces and we're like, okay, uh -uh, it, it becomes a part of our own fun memory. Of course, there are other better approaches to it, you know, but for me, I think it, it swings both ways. Nevertheless. Simon, children don't like vegetables. Yeah, but you must, they must eat. Even they must, they must eat it. <laughs> there is no way you will explain to them, hey, listen, if you eat the mango, it will fall. We are, my brother, you must chop it. And when they eat it, they realize that it's for their own good. Well, the different strokes for different folks. But the question I want to ask, Somebody posted something like, it got me thinking. If God knows everything and he knows our destiny, he knows that if YMC certainly was going to still get that job, why did we need to pray? What was the point of the prayer? Because, why because, we... because one, he wants the glory. Two, he wants you to participate in the getting of it. So for instance, you participated in that process as a child of God. God wants us to participate in everything. He has given us everything that has, belongs to him. We have, we have his spirit. He wants us to have his nature. He wants us to have eternal life. He is sharing everything with us. And even what wants us to have the sufferings of Christ. <laughs> he wants us to experience the same things that Jesus experienced. Let me ask a last question. I'm going to throw it out. You know, uh, I had more questions, but you know, uh, maybe we we'll come back another time. Has God ever told you not to pray for somebody? He wanted to pray for someone and he said, no, don't pray for this person. Has it ever happened to anybody here? Nobody. That's a shame. I mean, let me tell you why, why it's a shame. Because if God ever tells you not to pray for someone, it tells you how powerful your prayer is. It tells you, if you pray, God is going to answer, but he doesn't even want to deal with you. So don't pray for this person. Uh, it has happened to me before. Don't pray for this person. And I had to keep quiet. Mr. Adeleke, please pray for us. Let us close this meeting. Thank you. Father, we thank you. We appreciate you. We appreciate you because you have fed us a lot. We thank you for the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Father, blessed be your holy name. Everlasting King of King, Lord, Lord, moving forward, Holy Spirit, Lord, let your spirit always be with us. Let us be mindful of you at every point, every minute, every hour. Because you are our Father. Because you belong to us. Because you are our life. You are our hiding place. You are our great reward. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Say to the righteous, you are the 